The Kawasaki Versus came out in 2007 as a 650cc model, and later on in 2012, Kawasaki introduced a 1000cc model. The Versus has always been well loved by journalists and owners alike due to its extremely practical, comfortable, and value oriented nature. This is not an adventure bike, but instead an adventure styled bike that's designed to deliver the comfort and practicality of an adventure bike, but only meant to stay on paved roads. In 2018, Kawasaki decided to bring the Versus, this bike here, way up market, and they added $5,000 to the price, and at the same time, they added a ton of electronic gizmos, all the latest technology that you see on some of the super high-end motorcycles out there. So at $18,000, it slots somewhere in between the high-end European bikes, like some of the KTMs, the Ducati Multistradas, the BMW GSs. Between those, and on the lower end, something like a V-Strom, or maybe even a Tracer 900 or Tracer 9 GT. This bike offers a middle ground for people who don't necessarily need the 150 or 170 horsepower of some of those higher-end European bikes, but who do want more electronic gizmos, gadgets, comfort and luxury than some of the more budget options. The question is, is Kawasaki bringing enough to the table, not only to justify the $18,000 price tag, but also to compete with some of those higher end options because the pricing is pretty close to some of those bikes. So how is this bike like to ride? How does all the technology work? How is the comfort? How do all the features work? And how does it compare against the competition, which is really, really stiff? Hey everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Media. I am an independent content creator focusing on motorcycles and other outdoor sports. I do all my own scripting, filming, editing, publication, and promotion for all my videos. YouTube is my full-time job and if you'd like to support the creation of more content like this, there's a few easy things you can do. You can subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You can give a thumbs up to all the videos. You can always leave comments and please give me feedback also about what kind of videos you'd like to see next. You can also support me on Patreon because Patreon supporters enjoy access to exclusive video content that no one else gets. Thank you for watching and now back to your video. So before I get any further into the review, let me just clarify, like I said in the beginning, this is not an off-road bike. This is not an adventure bike that has off-road capability. It has adventure styling and adventure ergonomics, but that's where it ends. It's 17 inch front wheel, extremely limited ground clearance, uh, road oriented suspension travel, exposed and very fragile bodywork and engine cases, street style luggage. The, all these things mean that this bike is meant for the road and that's perfectly fine. So here in the United States for 2021, the Versus 1000 is only offered in the top end fully loaded model, which they call the SELT Plus. With the Versus 1000, you get a bike that inherits the Ninja 1000 power plant. So it's a 1043cc liquid cooled double overhead cam inline four cylinder bike. The bike puts out around 118 horsepower and somewhere in the mid 70s foot pounds of torque. So that power output places it quite a bit below its higher end competitors, which only cost a little bit more money than this. And that's something we're gonna to have to talk about later in the review. However, this bike does have a very, very flat torque curve, very linear power. And I think a lot of you are gonna appreciate almost the turbine like power delivery that you get from the inline four engine. The engine's made it up to a six speed, very slick shifting manual gearbox. And it does have a quick shifter function. This bike uses a chain final drive, which a lot of you are really going to like and some of you are really not going to like. If you like more touring oriented bikes like Kawasaki's own Concourse 14 that use shaft drive for low maintenance, then you're not going to like this. But if you appreciate lighter weight bikes or you want to be able to change the gearing, then you're going to like the chain drive. So the question is, what do you get for the $18,000 price tag? So like I mentioned, this bike is loaded. So let me quickly run through some of the features that it has, some of the equipment that it has. When we're done with that, we're going to get it out on the road, give it a good test ride, give you my riding impressions. Then we'll come back here and finish up by talking about what I like, what I don't like, what bikes this competes with, and then my final thoughts. So, so with that out of the way, let's start into the features and sort of the tech of this bike. So for the price tag, here's what you get. So one of the big things you get for the price tag is KECS or Kawasaki Electronic Control Suspension. 
what this does for you is it allows you to fine tune the damping and the preload via electronic controls through the dashboard. What it also does is it's a dynamic system. So as you ride like a few times every second, it's adjusting to the riding conditions, changing the damping to suit the kind of road that you're riding over. So this is very similar to the high-end dynamic suspensions you see on things like BMWs and Ducatis. So Kawasaki is really bringing technology to the table here to compete with those higher end European bikes. The bike uses throttle by wire, so it does have cruise control, which is a little finicky, and we'll show you that when we're out on the road. The bike has an adjustable windshield, although it's manually adjustable, not electronic. You can do it while you're riding, but it's a little bit tricky and it's probably not safe. Uh, I wish they would have made it like a one-hand adjuster, but that's a minor complaint there. Uh, looking at some of the controls of the bike, so I really like the dashboard. You get this analog tachometer flanked by this nice color TFT screen. I think it's a great combination. I really like having the analog tack. The bike has heated grips here. It also has Kawasaki's IMU or inertial measurement unit, which measures all of the acceleration forces of the bike in all different axis directions so that it's able to better control the traction control, the ABS, the suspension, and all those things. So it just works together to give you a very smooth, very luxurious ride. So the bike does have riding modes. It has four different riding modes, including one custom mode, which you can configure, and I'll show you a little bit of that. The riding modes link up the settings for the traction control intervention, the ABS intervention. They also work with the IMU and the, the electronically controlled suspension. And so like in the sport mode, you get firmer damping, right? And it reacts faster to things in the road. If you change it to the softer modes, you get softer settings on everything. Um, it also affects how much power you get. So in the rain mode, it actually only gives you 80% of the bike's power. Um, so that's probably not something you're gonna use unless it's really, really slippery. But it's nice to have the riding modes. You can change them on the fly, but you have to hold down the button for a second and close the throttle. So it takes a little bit of work to do that. In terms of lighting, this bike has LED headlights, LED cornering lights, which actually work pretty well and look pretty cool in my opinion. It has an LED tail light, and I think the new ones are coming with LED turn signals, but for some reason this bike still has the uh, incandescent turn signals. One last thing on, on the specs, it does have Kawasaki's Rideology connection, so you can use an app on your phone and you can download statistics from your ride and do route planning, and it's a cool thing. I, I haven't used it very much, so I can't give you a detailed experience with that, but it does have that connectivity if that's something you like to play with. This bike weighs 584 pounds wet, fully ready to ride with the luggage, obviously without stuff in the luggage, but with the luggage on the bike. So that weight is pretty high and it puts it in, you know, competition to some of the heavier adventure bikes out there. Um, it's about the same weight, for example, as my R1250 GS Adventure. But compared to like sport touring bikes like an FJR or a Concourse 14 or an RT, it is a little bit lighter than those bikes because it doesn't quite have the full fairing, the shaft drive, and some of the things that would add weight to a bike like that. The bike has a five and a half gallon fuel tank and I was getting between 40 to 45 miles a gallon. So you're gonna have a cruising range of around 200 miles. During those 200 miles, you're gonna be riding on some really nice wheels, tires, and brakes. So the wheels are 17 inch front and back wheels. The front uses a 130 width section front and the back uses a 180. So it's a pretty wide sport touring oriented rubber on the back. The brakes are excellent. So you've got dual 310 rotors up front squeezed by four piston calipers on each side and the back has a 250 millimeter rotor with a two piston caliper. So when you jump up here on the Versus, one of the first things you might notice is that it feels like a touring bike. You tend to kind of sit down inside the bike. The saddle is very wide, very supportive, and one of the most comfortable OEM saddles that I've ever experienced. So really good job on that. The windshield sits up pretty high. And like I mentioned, it has this adjustment here up and down. There's pretty good wind protection and you feel like you have quite a bit of fairing in front of you, except when you look down at your legs and you realize there's not really much fairing there. When I get on this bike and I look at this TFT dashboard and I look at this big windshield, I've got my hand guards here, mirrors that work really, really well, and you know, I can see past my shoulders. Everything about this bike screams touring to me. It says, you know, let's jump on, let's go sport touring, cross some state lines and find some really good twisty roads while we're out there. So with sort of the details and specs taken care of, Let's go out, take a ride on this bike together, and then we'll come back here to the driveway and we'll talk about, you know, what I like, what I don't like, how this compares to other bikes, and then my final thoughts. So with that being said, let's go out for a ride. Okay. Let's go and ride the Versus 1000. Let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up. 
nice four cylinder turbine sound there. I'll go ahead and change the mode into, let's start in road mode. So road mode gives you like the average suspension settings, average throttle response, probably what most people want to use most of the time. I have the preload set here to one rider and luggage, so I tend to like that. It's a little bit firmer or a little bit higher in the stroke than just one rider. So that's good. We got plenty of gas. We can see our last ride. We got 43 miles a gallon. Nice big gear indicator here, miles per gallon. This CL means that cornering lights are active. I don't know why they need to tell you that, but they have it. And of course your clock. This engine is so smooth and it's so tractable. Really miss inline four engines. It does have a buzz at certain RPMs, which I'll show you here once we get free of this traffic. Even when this windshield's down all the way, it actually protects you really, really well. And it's pretty quiet. It has this vent in it here, which works really nicely. I noticed that this bike is a cable clutch. So that was kind of interesting to see that. But the clutch pull is very, very easy, very nice. You can see the bike has like a nice induction noise. You can, you can hear that. I like that sound. So in the road mode here, the suspension is in a medium setting. It's not too firm. If I switch it into the sport mode, it's gonna sharpen the suspension up quite a bit. So in order to change modes here while I'm riding, what I have to do is I have to close the throttle, which slows me down, and I have to hold up on that mode button there until it changes. So it takes a second or two to do that. Because the suspension is dynamic, it, uh, you know, it's able to firm itself up under braking and things like that. So it actually, you know, it feels really nice and taut. Let me show you how smooth this engine is. So third gear, 2000 RPM, wide open throttle. I still get a nice, a nice pull. And now I have to stop here for the road construction. Okay, so I finally got free of the traffic a little bit. I think we have some open area here to open this puppy up. So I was playing with the RPM band to see kind of where the buzz was. So there's some around 6,000 RPM right around there. I do feel some like buzzing through the seat and the bars and the pegs, but Cruising on the highway in sixth gear, even at like 80, you're gonna be well below that RPM. So the quick shifter, see how nice and see how nice and smooth that is? I'll show you here on this uphill part. We'll give it the beans here a little bit. Closed course, of course. Okay, give it the beans. See, the bike is not slow, like I was saying in my stand-up review, but I just feel like it could use more power. Like, it's quick enough, but it's not exciting in the way that like a Multistrada is. It doesn't have the torque of the GS. It just doesn't have, you know, an abundance of power. And I think for almost $20,000, you know, you might want that. So I have gone into sport mode here, which I prefer on these twisty roads. It just makes the bike handle really well. This electronic suspension is very good. Like it feels very well controlled, very well damped. There's that nice induction noise I talked about. The wind protection from this is really extremely impressive. I have it, the windshield up now because it makes my audio quality a little bit better. But uh, yeah, this thing, I mean, you could tour on this. 500 miles a day, day after day, and you would have zero complaints about this thing. Give it the beans a little bit through here. Yeah, at 70 miles an hour, there's zero buffeting. And I am wearing a helmet with a shield. I'm wearing, I mean, a, a visor. I'm wearing a Climb Cryos Pro right now. Brakes brakes are all you could ever ask for this bike is fun to ride 
it really is fun to ride and it's smooth and it's luxurious this dashboard so let me show you something on the dash if you hit select I don't know I guess if you hit reset there you go if you hit reset what it does is it changes you know it reverses the colors so you can get this white with the black letters I tend to like the black with the white letters on it I don't know why we'll do a quick stop so that's brakes all the way ABS engaged ABS works really smoothly no complaints there I mean even though it's not a ton of power that's still really fun it still gives you somewhat of a rush that it's not totally boring but kind of just when it's getting going you're like oh is the power going to kick in and then it's just it's not quite there in the way that you might want from a bike at this price point so this is about all the off-roading this bike will ever see right here Everything about this bike really feels premium. I mean, from the suspension to the, you know, wind management and how they designed the windshield to the dashboard to all the control buttons. Um, yeah, it, it feels like a premium motorcycle, so I don't think you're going to be disappointed in that way. So yeah, I mean, to kind of sum up my riding experience with this bike, you know, I've ridden it on the freeway, I've ridden it on these back roads, I've done some day rides with it. And it really doesn't do anything wrong. Like, it doesn't do anything offensive. It's super comfortable, super practical. It's quick enough, it's luxurious. You know, I mentioned a million times how good the windshield is and everything like that. Uh, the dashboard. And I really do enjoy riding it. I just think it's kind of a tough sell against some bikes, um, some of those higher end bikes where the price is kind of similar to some of those. So unless you can get this for a super big discount, kind of makes it a harder proposition there. All right, so we're back from our ride, changed out of our riding clothes. So what are the final thoughts on this bike? So let's talk about starting with the things that I really love and I think the things that stand out. The best thing for me about this bike is the comfort. So the riding position is perfect. The leg room is really, really good. The seat is extremely wide and supportive. The windshield works really well. The handlebars are high enough and far enough back. Like everything really just coddles you as a rider and just says, you know, let's go touring. I also really, really like the dashboard on this bike. I think they did a great job combining the old school analog tachometer with the TFT screen to show other relevant information. I think that's a great combination and frankly one that I wish more manufacturers would adopt. The next thing I really, really love about this motorcycle is this Kawasaki electronic control suspension. So on my personal GS, I have dynamic ESA, which is basically a very similar system to this, just with BMW's own nomenclature. But I really appreciate these systems because when I transition from like straight roads and touring to twisty riding or off-road in case of the GS, which this bike doesn't do, but I can switch the suspension settings here and I can get a nice firm ride or a nice, nice plush ride depending on how I'm feeling and the kind of road that I'm riding on. It also allows you to electronically and easily adjust for weight in your saddlebags or weight of a passenger. And I think that's a very, very, very big bonus with a bike that has electronic suspension. I also really like the brakes on this bike. I really like the quick shifter. Some other journalists have said that the quick, shif quick shifter feels a little bit mushy, a little vague, but I found it just, it feels like it's damped. And I, I actually really like that. And it works really well on this bike. I also really like the flat torque curve. So this inline four engine, it always has power. It always has torque. And it, although it does have a little bit of buzz, a little resonant frequencies at certain RPMs, I still like it. And it's nice to be on a four cylinder bike again after riding twins for so many years. So what are the things I don't like about the Versus 1000? So there's, there's a couple things I want to mention. The one is the power, and it's really sort of the lack of power. I feel like the chassis, the suspension, the brakes, everything about the bike could handle and really would be better suited to having a higher power level. And I think if this bike wants to be more competitive, sort of in the price point that it's reached, I think it needs to have a bit more power, maybe 30 or 40 more horsepower. So that was a little bit disappointing because 
sometimes you want that super crazy acceleration that gives you the adrenaline hit and makes you excited and makes you scared. And this bike doesn't have that. And that's something you can get from the competition. So you definitely need to keep that part in mind and try to test ride the bike if you can. The other thing I don't love about this bike is the way that some of the controls work. So figuring out how to use the buttons and to control the riding modes, the suspension settings and things like that is a little bit tricky and it's not at all intuitive. I actually had to go into the manual to figure out how to use these buttons and sort of make things to be configured in the way I wanted to. So that was a little tricky. The other thing I will say about that is that the cruise control works very weird. Like when you're on the highway and you try to make adjustments to the cruise, it, um, it just acts very strange and doesn't always respond to your commands. So that was something I found a little bit challenging. So how does this bike compare to the competition? Well, this bike sits in kind of a weird space in terms of pricing and power between some of the more exotic, higher end, more expensive bikes, like maybe the S1000XR, um, BMW's GS, the Ducati Multistrada, bikes like that, maybe a KTM 1290. It sits a bit below those in terms of price and definitely in terms of power. But then again, it sits above other bikes like maybe the V-Strom 1050 or a Tiger 850 Sport or even the Tracer 9 GT because it has more technology, more features and more comfort than those bikes do and is really a bit more touring oriented for somebody who wants all those gadgets. So with that in mind, it's kind of hard to place this bike. It kind of sits in a little bit of a category on its own. I think if you like the inline four cylinder engine and you like all the tech gadgets and you appreciate the comfort and you don't need the super high horsepower, then maybe this is a bike for you. And I'll tell you, I've seen some really good deals on these discounted way below the sticker price. The other decision that you might be making is, you know, do you get something like this or do you go ahead and get an FJR or a Concourse 14 or an RT or something more of a sport, traditional sport touring bike with a little bit more of a lean forward position, a bit larger windshield, shaft drive, and probably a little bit heavier motorcycle. Well, I think that decision comes down to, do you need that extra power and torque? How often do you plan to carry a passenger or really heavy cargo because they're gonna be a little better at carrying weight than this bike is? And do you really need the, the shaft drive as compared to the chain drive on this? So, so this is a little bit more on the sport side of sport tour and you get those adventure bike ergonomics, which for me is like, that's key. And that's why I don't really like sport touring bikes with the leaned over position but some people like that to each his own. So I think those are the things you have to think about when you're deciding between this and more of a traditional sport touring bike. Also the weight, like I mentioned, is quite a bit less on this than some of those bikes. So final thoughts on the Versus 1000. Who is this bike really for? Well, I think it's for somebody who wants the upright, super comfortable, super luxurious, adventure riding position, but doesn't plan to go off-road. Somebody who wants things like the electronic suspension, the adjustable windshield, the ability to go touring all day long. Somebody who wants the Japanese reliability and sort of drama-free ownership experience that a bike like a Kawasaki will likely bring as opposed to European bikes. Somebody who likes the four-cylinder engine and who is not obsessed with ultimate power and torque numbers and who needs to compete with, you know, the 180 horsepower beasts that are out there. So I think if those things describe you, then I think the Versus should be at the very top of your list. Although this bike faces really strong competition on the higher end and also faces competition from below from more affordable bikes, I still think this fills an important niche in the market. And I think a lot of people will be very, very happy with it. I would also say that I don't think Kawasaki's done the greatest job getting the marketing out there about this bike because even for myself as somebody who reads about motorcycles quite a bit, I didn't know just how upmarket they had taken this bike and just all the features they had crammed into it. So I hope this review was useful. I hope you got value out of it. If you're considering buying this bike or a bike in this segment, if it was, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please leave a comment. And if you want to support future content creation for motorcycle videos and things like this on my channel, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. I'd really, really appreciate it. Until next time, ride safe. We'll see you out there. See you on the next video.